Doc Talk is brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection. Hi there and welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. Sure glad you joined us today. We're going to have a great show. Dr. Matt Meesner is going to join me. And we're going to continue our discussion on the down cow and critical care of that cow. Thanks for joining us and stay tuned. I'm Dennis Tebow. My wife and I, Kathy, are the owners of Wolf Creek Cattle Company. We have grown to approximately 70 bulls. I'm Reese Arnold. I'm the livestock manager at Wolf Creek Cattle Company. You know, these are not just like normal cattle. These cattle, they're hauled anywhere from, you know, eight to 10 hours a day across the United States and asked to perform. The Multiman 90 keeps them kind of level. It maintains and balances their system. The stress level's less when, you know, when everything's right and working right, then they're working right. This segment is brought to you by Rotomix, manufactured in the USA and designed for feeding performance in the feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow-calf operations. Hi there and welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University and I'm joined by Dr. Matt Meisner. And Dr. Meisner is an associate clinical professor here at the K-State Veterinary Health Center and he's also, you're boarded in internal medicine. Right. And uh, you spend a lot of time dealing with difficult cases, whether it's primary care where people from the area bring cases into our clinic, and you also deal with referral, with referral cases, which are tertiary care type cases, but uh, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Glad to be here. And uh, we're going to talk about some, we, this is a kind of a three-part series. Last week we uh, talked about reasons why cows go down, or calves, or feed yard steers, and, and uh, had it kind of narrowed down to infectious, you know, toxins, metabolic, and, and uh, uh, injuries. But today we want to focus on, okay, what are some of the things we're going to do to care for these animals? And it always starts out with the physical exam, right? Absolutely. Um, with all those different reasons that you've, you've, you've discussed already, um, there's no substitute for a good physical exam to try to confirm them. You know, um, you have a pretty good idea on a history before you get to a farm or I have a pretty good idea on a history before the animal gets to me in the hospital. But those are only, you know, uh, possibilities. So then the next thing is to get right down and dirty and do a good close physical exam. And uh, because your physical exam will hopefully help confirm those things, yep. but also begins your road to treatment or not to treat, you know, in some situations. So how are you, you know, you know, you're called to the farm as a veterinarian, you come in and here's a steer or a cow that's, that's down, where are we going to start? First with attitude. You know, I, I look at them and I think, are they, are they aware of their surroundings? Are they bright? Are they alert? Or do they look really sick? Okay, and uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to get down and, and try to determine, um, do we have a fever? Do we have an infectious process that's going on? Um, some of those things that we can target specifically um, and, and kind of go from there, but it's amazing uh, how alert uh, cattle can be with a pretty severe injury, you know, so, right. um, but really sick cattle uh, usually means something, something bigger, so. Got to be careful around those guys too because something that's hurt and not able to respond the way they normally would can be a little fractured. Safety, yeah, um, even though they don't look alert, they can sure swing a leg and take your shins out from under you, um, and then, and then, then, you're in, then you're in a mess, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so we go in, we do the physical exam, and, and we start to get things pinpointed. I, I assume that's when our diagnosis and, and then subsequent treatment begins. Right, and some of those we're gonna start doing maybe a little ancillary tests. You know, I might wanna get a little blood to look for things and whatnot, but um, based on my stethoscope, my thermometer, and all those, those are gonna direct the next step. Um, whether, and that's usually some diagnostic tests um, to give us an idea for treatment as well as potential prognosis for this animal getting up. That sounds like a winner. When we come back from break, we're going to continue our discussion with Dr. Meisner talking about down cow therapy and critical care. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're sure glad you joined us. 
Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. In a feedlot situation, we use uh, multi-men on a on-arrival basis. Maybe if they came in a little lighter weight, 550, 600 pounds. We use multi-men in high-stress cattle, high-risk cattle. We're, look, we're looking for a better response to our uh, vaccine. For some of the cattle that we're looking for when we use multi-men, um, they come in, maybe they look a little uh, mineral deficient. Uh, they come from parts of the country that are lower in certain mineral. So we use it on those cattle, um, tends to make a big difference. Here in Dallas, we're proud that our vehicles use an advanced biofuel called biodiesel. It's made from renewable resources like soybean oil, canola oil, even recycled cooking oil. This year, biodiesel will displace almost a billion gallons of fossil fuel nationwide. Our air is cleaner, our economy is stronger, and America's more energy independent. It's working here, it can work in your community. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Normycin LA, Normectrum Plus, 1% and Poron, the practical choice for your herd. Hi there and welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Matt Meisner and we both work here at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. We're sure glad you joined us today. We're having an important discussion and it's one of those discussions um, that, that has really caused a lot of grief within the industry, you know, the, whether it's the dairy industry or the beef industry, the down cow, and whether we are treating those animals appropriately, handling those animals appropriately, you know, or, or uh, you know, making the right decisions, because these are the animals that wind up on the YouTube video, these are the animals that wind up giving us a, a black eye within the industry, and I think it's really important, I appreciate you coming by to talk with us about how we care and, and treat for these, treat these animals. Yeah, very important and, and a lot of awareness is being focused on this kind of thing and, and I tell you the first thing for treatment that I look at um, and discuss with a client is uh, what, what kind of facilities, what kind of means do we have to treat this if, it's, if it is going to be one that can be happened. You know, it could I, be even as simple as moving one. Right. I mean how are you going to move one? How do you recommend? I mean we can't drag them. Right. Do you have the facilities? Do you have the equipment to um, not? Yeah, yeah. Part of the rules is you can't drag them around. I mean, you have to lift and support and, and do those kind of things. So before we even start, can we can we do that? Can we maintain that level of treatment in this environment? Um, you know, so we work a lot with the feed yards and and dairies, um, but you know, if you have a loader bucket you can roll that animal into the loader bucket to, mm -hmm. to move them. Uh, a low boy or a sled type system where you're going to take that animal and, and roll it onto that to, to move it around the farm if you're going to move it to, to a different location. Correct. I mean, I mean even, even before, you know, we, we pursue a specific diagnosis, I want to, we want to know that because it might be better for the animal and for everybody else to just um, possibly euthanize that animal then and get a diagnosis to prevent further other animals going down. Yeah. So, but can we do that? It, and it's uh, the management of those down cows is not an easy undertaking. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, you've been, we've done it, and uh, it's backbreaking work. Um, yeah. um, but the facilities need to be be able to to handle that kind of a thing. So you go into this multifactorial type of thought process and kind right. of a decision tree as a veterinarian on what we're going to do for these animals, and it's not just dependent on the medicine, is it? No, not at all. I mean, absolutely. I can. I can medically treat a heck of a lot of things, and uh, even some of the the wounds, the injuries, those kind of things, I can treat them, you know. Um, but are they going to necessarily get better? No, and and not just that wound in this cow might have a better prognosis in a different area, you know, in a, in a different situation. Um, so there's no single test, there's no single blood parameter, there's no single kind of attitude of the individual that's going to tell me how she's going to do. It's, a, it's the whole picture. Uh, it's the whole it's the, environment. Do, the, do we have the time? Do we have the labor? Do we have the support staff? And, and do we have the commitment? Correct. 
absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yep. And then will we have the facility to, to actually in, implement some of this medical therapy, you know, and we can talk uh, about some of those kind of things as well. I think it'd be great. We're gonna come back after the break. Remember, you can't drag a down animal. Make sure that you find a way to move that animal safely. And, and when we come back, we're gonna talk about treatment. You're watching Doc Talk. We're sure glad you joined us. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern, right here on RFD TV. Beef producers need a practical choice when antibiotic therapy is required. More than ever, they are reaching for non-prescription Noromycin 300 LA from Norbrook, specially formulated to produce sustained antibiotic blood levels up to four days in cattle. Noromycin 300 LA delivers economic, broad-spectrum disease management for pneumonia, shipping fever, pink eye, wound infections, and foot rot. See for yourself why Norbrook's Noromycin 300 LA is the practical choice for your herd. America's ranchers and farmers have had a long-standing commitment to quality, and now the Checkoff-funded Beef Quality Assurance Program is working with you to improve our product for consumers. At BQA.org, you'll find an array of educational materials about BQA. You can also take our online course for BQA certification. BQA, it's a commitment to quality, it's a process for continuous improvement, and it's about doing the right thing. This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. Hi there, and welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Matt Meisner. Dr. Meisner is an associate clinical professor here in the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University. He's a boarded internal medicine specialist for cattle, and always enjoyable to have you here, Matt. And uh, we're talking about down cows, and we talking about moving them. We've talked about some of the things and some of the issues and, and you know, now we've got our diagnosis and, and we're going to treat. What What's next? Well, uh, agreement from all and understanding from all. And, and uh, I think that uh, communication between everybody um, is and that, that you're talking Extremely about the important. veterinarian, the producer, the herdsman, the, the employees, everybody's on the same everybody. page. Yeah, everybody has to be on the same page. And then we've, we've determined a potential problem. Um, we have some specific treatments that we're going to pursue or we're going to implement in this, in this situation. And the next thing, everybody has to understand that, which sometimes is difficult. The veterinarian has a different understanding than, 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 than another person. Um, but um, it's a good idea at that point to set some goals and some cutoff points. And so, is this cow going to be, where's she going to be in, in two days from now okay. or a day? And uh, if she's to that point, we continue. If she's to this point, we don't. You know, and so we need to have those kind of set up. They're all, they're all different, you know, but uh, if we're not progressing like we want, we need to either rethink it or stop. Um, or if we're progressing really bad, everybody has to be remember that, hey, we're to this point, we need to stop. Right. Um, those kind of things. Everybody just needs to be uh, understanding of the whole situation, and, and we just have to have some set goals. So uh, work with your local veterinarian. Each case is different, all and, different. and get some out there, examine that cow, and, and I think it's really important when you have those cutoff, this, this is success, this is failure and at this point in time we need to make a decision. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, okay. and, and, and So uh, what are some of the things that you do to, to help cows move or get up? You know, we talked when we were off, off camera about traction. Yeah. And I yeah. thought that was pretty neat when you're talking about just moving animals to a different area. Sure, I mean, uh, you know, we get slipped down on ice and can't get up and you start to get worried. Uh, and they get in a slippery pin or the sloppy clay. 
um, they can panic, you know, they get down and, and their issue might just be that they, they wore themselves out trying to get up. And uh, I've seen plenty of cows that were, that were down for a legitimate reason. Uh, eventually they're not gonna get up right away, so they need some traction and some help getting up. And, they, and if they're unstable and they're slippery, they're just gonna stay. And stressed. so moving them into a dirt lot or moving them into, onto a pasture or you know, someplace where they sure. can where they where they where they got support and, and it's not going to create more injury with them struggling to try to get up and so we start there and say hey do we have an area that we can put this animal in that's comfortable it's got traction whenever they try to get up they're going to be able to do it sometimes it's as simple as getting their feet going downhill too absolutely yeah yeah <laughs> yeah you never think a calf laying in a six inch indention with his feet up if you just roll him over he jumps up and runs off yeah no kidding i mean it's, it's amazing uh, those are the those are the those are the easy ones when we come back um from break maybe we'll discuss some of those that are a little more difficult to sure. manage right Sounds Appreciate good. you being yeah. here. Appreciate y'all watching here. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're sure glad you joined us. This segment is brought to you by Lalaman Animal Nutrition, dedicated to the development and production of natural and differential solutions for animal nutrition. A combination of low temperatures, dry soils, and poorly developed wheat has caused concern amongst wheat producers of the wheat survival this year. With Ag AM in Kansas, I'm Devin Stewart. K-State Research and Extension Wheat Production Specialist Jim Schroyer is here to talk about the concern amongst wheat producers. And that's going to depend on where you are in the state. Uh, again, in the central part of the state, uh, north to south, I would say the root systems are, are quite well, especially if they were planted a little on the early side. But as the further west you go, that wheat has not rooted very well. And some, even some of the earlier planted wheat into the dry soils, uh, the crown root system hasn't really developed and you can see the wheat in that part of the state has are showing severe drought drought symptoms. For Ag AM in Kansas, I'm Devin Stewart. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. If our local animal agriculture industry disappeared, what else would disappear? The buses that get us to school? The playgrounds and ballparks we go to after school? The books and computers that help us learn and grow? Animal agriculture provides millions of dollars in tax revenue that pay for our school improvements, that pave the foundation that will build our future. A message from U.S. Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Cow-calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive economical line of boron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by Double D Family Mat Shop. Injured livestock could mean injured profits. Protect yours with no slip mats from Double D Family Mat Shop. Hi there and welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Matt Meisner, who is an associate clinical professor in the Veterinary Health Center here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. And Matt, we're talking about down cows and we've talked about moving them to traction and we've got the diagnosis now. What are your checklists for, for guys and gals out there that have a cow, steer, heifer that are, that are down? That, what, what do we need to do for them? Um, well, aside from those other things, um, comfort uh, would be one. Um, in some situations, cows that are down as little as six hours, um, really flaccid, um, may not get up. And, and those are cows that stay in the same position for that period of time. Right flat out, stay in that same position and don't move. Um, 
so they're, they're comfortable circulatory sure issues it's just a, it's crush compartmental type syndromes different things that you'll see in uh, in human medicine as well um, but if they can't move and they can't keep blood flowing and get off of those muscles um, they're in they're in the world of hurt right. and so soft bedding um, sand I mean if we've got something if they're gonna lay around um, and not be able to position sand or deep straw or deep shavings, dirt, stuff stuff like that will help prevent some of that, but yep. they still need to be moved. And so just rolling them from side to side every several hours is, is, is immensely uh, helpful uh, to these guys. And so um, an area that's comfortable and, and some way that can move them around. So just don't let them stay in that same position for, for very long. Eating, drinking? Clean food, good water, good, good, good diet, you know, just um, comfort food. You know, yep. so they need that, and uh, keep them comfortable with their, with plenty of food and and, uh, and nutrients in front of them. Um, then we talk about uh, analgesics. You know, um, painkillers. Uh, some of these compartmental things can be horribly painful, and if they went down and had a, a muscle injury, um, they're they're horribly painful. Um, so. No different. different than us taking an Advil. Absolutely. You know, we, and we have those kind of things that we can use in cattle. I mean, we have, we have anti-inflammatories that we can, we can give intravenously. Um, we have some oral pain meds out available now that uh, are very helpful. I mean, it's, you know, Motrin for cows kind of stuff, and uh, <laughs> that helps. But not only does that help the pain, um, it helps some of the inflammation. So um, there's uh, some specifics for using that, but uh, and the next thing is going to be fluids. They need lots of fluids, and some of these they don't want to drink too well. We might try some IV fluids because the muscle damage yeah. becomes toxic to the animal eventually, so it kind of breaks down. So we need to kind of keep flushing those kidneys out, and uh, so it's nice to have some sort of a facility that we can hang fluids and give IV stuff like that too. Um, but at bare minimum is good water in front of them and nice, comfortable place to be. Shade, and, and windbreak. Shade. Yeah, yeah. We didn't talk about even ambient temperatures different times of year. I mean, uh, pretty, pretty uh, self-explanatory. But every situation, we're going to make decisions like that. Keep them comfortable. Um, keep them, keep them eating. It's great stuff. Yeah. Appreciate everything you do. Thanks. Great topic. Thank you for watching Doc Talk. Remember, if you want to know more about what Dr. Meisner and I do here at Kansas State University, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. We always recommend that you work with your local practitioner through issues such as ones we're discussing today. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from the College of Veterinary Medicine. You've been watching Doc Talk. We're sure glad you joined us, and we'll see you down the road. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. DocTalk was brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, sure trace mineral supplementation by timed injection. This segment is brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, sure trace mineral supplementation by timed injection. Multimin 90 is an injectable trace mineral product that contains selenium, copper, manganese, and zinc. One injection provides approximately a, a 60 to 90 day supply for any treated animal. Trace minerals that are ingested by the animal are absorbed relatively inefficiently from the gut. Uh, in addition, other elements in the animal's diet, other nutrients can interfere with trace mineral absorption from the gut. By injecting a supplemental source of trace mineral, um, we miss those sources of interference. In other words, injectable trace minerals are absorbed with nearly 100% efficiency and, and used much more efficiently by the animal. The most critical times for trace mineral nutrition in a breeding cow's life are the period immediately preceding calving and the period immediately preceding breeding. We try to treat mature cows, mature breeding cows, uh, about 60 days before each of those critical time periods starts. Late gestation and early lactation are going to provide the, the biggest drain on a cow's body reserves for critical trace minerals. We need to replace those before breeding occurs 
in order to give that female an optimum chance of becoming of, of conceiving and becoming pregnant for the subsequent production year. Now in our study at Kansas State University, uh, our cows had access to a self-fed trace mineral product. Uh, our treated cows were injected at preg check in December and then again approximately four weeks before the breeding season began. The result of our research was a 9% greater AI conception rate and a calving distribution that was shifted forward into the calving season approximately 13%. In other words, we had more calves born earlier in the season than we did in untreated cows.